So welcome back to the video lectures on image and speech processing. So from today's uh, video's lectures, we'll be talking about the speech processing techniques that are available. Right? So in my previous videos, we have been talking about the image compressions, image, what is digital image, what is image sampling, what is image compression techniques, what is uh, intensity transform, how do we do image enhancement techniques, what are available, who are, where do we use, what are the filtering techniques, all those concepts we have built. So that is what I was about in image processing techniques, right? So from uh, this video lecture, we will be talking about the speech processing techniques. So what is speech? How do you represent a speech? How do you do analysis? How do you do uh, synthesis of the speech processing? So all these concepts we will be talking about in speech processing models, right? <coughs> So, in today's topic, we will be talking about the fundamentals of the human speech production. So, what actually, how is the speech produced? How is actually, or what is speech? How is speech produced in humans? What are the organs that are uh, required for producing the speech? What is the role of each of the organ present for the uh, production of the speech? So, if you know all these things, like, then we can digitally uh, implement all these models, all these organs by digital systems, we can model a vo vocal tract. So, for to model the vocal tract, we have to know the role of each organ, right? So, to know those, we have to first talk about the fundamentals of the human speech production, right? So, uh, let's go into this. So, what is the fundamentals of speech production? How does the speech product, how does the speech look like? So, it's basically, it is looks like a periodic signal with varying amplitude as shown here. So a speech segment will be having, usually will be having three segments which we are calling it to be V, U and S. Right? Usually a speech will be having these three segments. What is V is? It is the voiced segment. U is the unvoiced segment. So let me just write them out. V is voiced segment. U is unvoiced segment. S is the science part. So basically, uh, speech signal, if it is there, if it is existing, if it is reproduced, then it will be of this form, which is like varying amplitude with respect to time. So if we uh, consider the speech signal, then we can say that along the time axis, right, this is the varying amplitude. How is the amplitude changing? And this is the time. Right? So this is the uh, general form of a speech signal. So, what actually is a speech signal? Speech signal is a sequence of the sounds. Okay, the how are the sounds produced? In which order they are produced? That is called as my sequence of the sounds. And sequence of the sounds combinedly is called as the speech. Right. The transitions in the sounds between from one. Uh, one sound to another represent the information. So basically, we have uh, information, information, and data. So these are two different terms that we have read, right? So even in image processing technique, also image compression techniques, also we have dealt with what is information, what is data. Information is the thing that we want to convey from one person to another or from one person to a computer. Data is how this information is stored in the form so that it is understandable at the receiver side, right? So we have two terms, which is the information and data. So speech is the sequence of the sounds. So the sound is the data representation, right? The information is how is the sound changing? It, the transition between the sounds represent the information. So the representation of the speech is this is the sound, which is the data, right? So, no, usually the arrangements of the sounds are governed by the rules of the language. Like we all know that in English language uh, is very much different from the Russian language or the mother tongue, Telugu, Hindi, so Sanskrit. So the arrangement of all these sounds differ from the language to language. So how these sounds are to be arranged are defined by the rules of this language. The study of the rules and their implication in the human communication system is called as the linguistics. It's called the study of the rules, of the uh, language rules and implication, how they are implemented in human communication is called as the linguistics. The study of the classification of sounds, 
that are available in speech or in those specific language is called as the phonetics. Right? The combination of these two are used for processing of the speech signal and to enhance as well as to extract information. So these two terms or these two study are used to implement or to understand how is the information stored. If we want to retrieve the information, how is, where is the information stored? And if you want to enhance or uh, improvise the speech signal waveform, then how do you do the enhancement? So all these uh, things are done by studying the linguistics as well as the phonetics. So uh, before we go into the uh, how is the uh, how do we model or how do we artificially speech model it? So we have to first understand how is the speech produced in human bodies. So this is an X-ray of the human vocal systems. So if we see here, we have the, let's start from the bottom. So we have the glottis, trachea, glottis, then comes the uh, esophagus, then we got the epiglottis, then we got the velum, tongue, mouth and nostrils. Right? So, all these parts contribute in our speech processing system. So, where does the vocal tract start? It starts at the vocal cords and it ends at the lips. In between, we have the pharynx, oral cavity and the other parts which is the esophagus, epiglottis, velum, all these things. So, what is happening here is these parts play a, each and every part play an important role like for example velum is a uh, like a switch system where uh, this closes if it is closed then the mouth cavity is used for producing the sound whereas if it is open then the nasal cavity is used for producing the sounds so base velum is kind of a switch switch so this is a very important organ which is present in humans so the same kind of an organ has to be implemented using digital systems when we are trying to model it, right? So epiglottis, epiglottis, glottis, right? Glottis is where the pressure is being created for the production of the sound. On an average, on an average, the length of the vocal tract is about 17 centimeters and the cross-sectional area is in the range 0 to 20 centimeters square. Right? It is like on an average, we have taken uh, we have taken uh, um, people as samples and they have uh, found out what is the vocal tract length and it is what is the cross-sectional area. This area of, uh, which is ranging from 0 to 20 and the vocal tract is of 17 centimeters is usually for male. Okay, so the female, for females it is uh, very much different because uh, for males the vocal tract length is greater and cross-sectional area is also greater. So whereas for females, if you go for females, then it is of 15 centimeters, the area is around like 0 to 18 centimeters square. So the area and the cross-sectional area differ for male and female range. And it also differs for the age group. This is an on an average for all the age groups we have considered and this can be direct right now the nasal tract begins at the velum and end at the nostrils so what happens here is let me just erase this here we have the trachea glottis here right so we have a velum here now this from this point to the nostrils this area is called as my nasal tract right this is my vocal tract this is my nasal tract Right? Now, when velum is lowered, the nasal tract is acoustically coupled to the vocal tract to produce the nasal sounds of the speech. So, basically, when it is lowered, right, it is closed, then the nasal tract is coupled. It is like the how we have the coupling system between the inductors, like so the uh, pressure as well as the air pressure as well as the air velocity are acoustically coupled to the vocal tract. That is how we are able to produce our nasal sounds. The same system, if we want to represent in the form of a block diagram, we have a block diagram. So, uh, to derive this kind of a block diagram, we have taken the human vocal tract schematic, which we, which was obtained from my X-ray system. So, from here, I can see that it is the glottis, epiglottis, pharynx cavity, velum, 
this is the tongue position how we have the upper palate lower palate right then we have the upper lip and my lower lip right so this is the and this is the how a schematic of my vocal tract can be represented from my x-ray system the same thing if i want to represent in the form of a block diagram so this is how i can do it so what is here is we have the lungs volume which is creating the pressure then we have the trachea tube then the vocal cords then we have the pharynx cavity then it we have the mouth cavity from where we get the oral output uh, or otherwise we have another uh, diversion where we have a velum present so based on the close whether it is closed or open we will have the nasal cavity being used from nasal cavity we have the nasal output right so from the schematic human vocal tract schematic we can draw the block diagram of the human vocal tract and this can be represented by these tubes so here the important parameters on which we will be focusing on are the vocal cords how is the mouth cavity being used nasal cavity being created right at the end we would be talking how is the pressure created by the lungs now so basically uh, we have to know how is the uh, voiced segments being created in my speech right so how is the um, how is what is creating the speech sound so for that we will be studying about the mechanism of the speech production so what we are having right now is we have a uh, uh, see we are going to study about the voiced sounds how are the speech produced for the voiced segments such as the vowels right we have the voice segments are usually of vowels in english language so what happens here is we have a vocal cords play these are the figures which are representing the uh, this is the figure which is representing the vocal cords okay so usually the vocal cords are closed usually in the first step or any time the vocal cords are closed what happens is air enters enters the lungs via normal breathing at that point no speech is produced that is the first step now when when air is being expelled out what is happening here is we are creating the lungs are creating a pressure due to this air present which are be, which is to be expelled out that pressure is being sent through the trachea and it is sent to the vocal cords now what is happening here is the at the vocal cords the pressure is being created so slowly the pressure gets increased the slowly the pressure gets increased so what happens is the membrane the uh, vocal cords membrane which are closed right so they are being pushed by the pressure created so if this is the vocal cords it is made by the it is made to push by the pressure created by the air that air pressure is created by the lungs so what happens is they create the vibrations they create the vibrations and they follow the bernoulli law vibrations and based on these air pressure variations the vocal cords are opening which are calling it to be a glottal opening right so now air is chopped up from the opening and closing of the glottal orifice so what happens is it is slowly the air pressure creates it increases so it slowly pushes the vocal cords to be open so we create a small opening which we are calling it to be the orifice right orifice is nothing but the small opening so we create a small opening so the air which is present at the other end of the vocal cords go rushes out through that uh, small orifice so that is how the uh, whole vocal cords are pushed open now after the pressure goes on out it slowly decreases at one point it starts decreasing so what happens is the vocal cords start joining again right so the pressure when it decreases it start joining again so they are once again closed so they started with the closed system they ended with the closed system in between what is happening there is a pressure increase and a pressure decrease so when the pressure is increased the vocal cords are pushed open and the pressure create are sent out so when the uh, pressure is closing the pressure uh, the vocal cords may Uh, are made to be closing up right so the orifice goes on decreasing now this is like the continuous process because we are continuously breathing in and breathing out so what happens is as when we are talking the 
uh, the air pressure is continuously increasing and decreasing so that is how when the uh, they are continuously that is how the vocal cords are made to be opened and closed in a continuous fashion and that to a periodic nation so that is called as the quad quasi periodic pulses so what happens is because of the closing of the vocal cords and opening of the uh, vocal cords in a periodic fashion uh, through the small hole so what happens is we create a quadric quasi periodic pulses right this is the how a vowels or the voice segment is being represented right so what are the positions that uh, now the air flow is happening because of this change in the pressure of the air flow right and the movement of the air flow from the trachea vocal cords pharynx and mouth cavity the based on the positions of the jaw tongue velum lips and mouth different uh, sounds are produced the jaw tongue positions velum these are called as the articulators okay right? so the positions of these articulators are made to produce different sounds right that is being produced by human uh, human in human language like in english we have vowels consonants so we have in vowels again we have different sounds like a e i o u right so we have different sounds all these sounds are produced by the positions of the uh, articulators the pressure how it is increasing and decreasing that is all depend upon like what are the articulators also being present so right based on how is the velum position so all different kinds of sounds can be produced so if we want to represent in the form of a equation so what is happening here is when the vocal cords are tensed the vocal cords behave like a relaxation oscillators so what do you mean by the uh, or tensed means tensed means they are actually closed right the vocal cords are closed what happens is it's like just like the rubber band so what happens is when you just pull it and you uh, put them as it is so what happens when you uh, apply pressure at the middle so what happens it keeps on oscillating so that is how when the vocal cords are stretched and there is no pressure outside and below the vocal cords then they are called it to be the vocal cords are tensed and they behave like a relaxation oscillator so that is when they are closed right so now the air flow is from the pressure is created now what happens builds up air pressure builds up behind the vocal cords and the vocal cords until they are pushed up so the air pressure are air pressure goes on increasing at this point till they are made the vocal cords are made to be pushed up so uh, what happens after that now what happens is the air flow through the opening into the vocal tract is sound is produced when the air flows from the opening into the vocal tract sound is produced due to this drop in the air pressure behind the vocal they are again closed right so this is a uh, continuous process the cycle of the building of pressure of the vocal tracts creating an opening of for the air flow and then closing creates a quasi periodic signal this is called as a speed signal so if i am talking about in this in the waveform terms how do i do this this is how this is how where the vocal cords are tensed we have the just the glottis pressure being building up right the pressure the air pressure being building up this is when the vocal cords are opened and closed opened and closed so what happens is we get a quasi periodic signal this is the quasi periodic signal this is where the pressure is starting in the first case where the pressure is getting build up so once the pressure is opened and the vocal cords are made to open and they are made to close based on my pressure increase and decrease so this we get a quasi periodic so the first thing is the glottis pressure being building up for so on the next part we call it to be the quasi periodic signal right so this is the uh, velocity versus the time graph right so when we consider the time versus the pressure that is present in the mouth right we see that when the glottis pressure is slowly building up the pressure of the mouth pressure air that is existing in my mouth is very narrow so once the glottis or the quasi periodic signal is being created we have the high pressure at my mouth so this is the pressure curve 
this is the uh, velocity curve right so this is the glottal volume velocity that has been present so based on this area represents the glottis pressure and this presents the quasi periodic signal right so now when we are studying about the mechanism we can uh, make, uh, we can do the schematic diagram of the only the vocal apparatus that is existing right so we have a muscle force this is basically the lungs the pressure created by the lungs here right then we have uh, the vocal cords based on our block diagram we have the trachea this is the trachea representation then we have the vocal cords so to represent the vocal cords mechanically i am using the we can use the spring system spring with a load which will be behaving like my vocal cords opening and closing and creating an orifice right then we have uh, then we have the uh, velum as well as the nasal tube vocal tract tubes which is creating the nasal output as well as my nasal as well as my uh, mouth system so this is the pressure that i can have right so what happens here is now we have the subglottal system they serve as a source of the energy for the production of the speech so what happens here is the subglottis which is the lungs as well as the epiglottis there the this system is called as the subglottis from where the pressure is being created so they act as the source of the energy for the production of the sounds now when we consider the mechanical model of the vocal tract we have to provide the excitation signal right so when we are talking about the mechanical or the digital signal processing model then we have to provide uh, we have in human bodies we have lungs which are creating this source right subglottal system so whereas when we are trying to uh, artificially manipulate or artificially create the sounds then we have to do a mechanical model right so of the vocal cord that will create an excitation signal for the, for the vocal tract system right so this uh, what happens here is the split signal is basically following the acoustic wave theory that is radiated from the system when air is expelled from the lungs and resulting air flow is shaped according to the time varying vocal tract so what till now we have talked speech signal in the form of a wave signal what kind of wave is it is called as the acoustic wave right sound waves acoustic sound waves and they are radiated from the system what is my system is when the air is being uh, expelled out from my lungs based on that the air flow is creating vibrations in the vocal cords and based on the articulation position sound is created right so this is the radiated from the system now the how is the resulting air flow is being shaped it is shaped based on the how vocal tract is changing with respect to my vocal uh, with respect to my time so what does it mean is how is my for example when we are talking at this instant of time how is my articulation positions what is how is my jaw placed how is my tongue placed so that is at this point when we are placing it when we consider the next instant of time how is this all the articulating positions vary so that is how the time varying position the how is the, uh, the vocal tract will be changing with respect to the time so based on this how is the resulting air flow being radiated or how much of energy how much of pressure is being created right so uh, based on all these things the, they follow the acoustic wave theory and they produce different sounds so this is how the mechanism of the speech is being produced right now what happens here is there are few cases now if the vocal cords are tense that means there are closed up and the pressure is building up at the one end of the vocal cords what happens is the air causes the vocal cords to vibrate right it causes the air cords to air uh, the vocal tracts to be vibrating in a quasi periodic noise noise or the speech signal is being created right so that is called as my voiced segment in my speech right so a voiced segment how is this being used vocal cords are te tensed and they are vibrating they go on vibrating so based on those vibrations we get the voiced segment and those vibrations are quasi periodic in nature now if they are relaxed okay if they are relaxed what does that mean air passes to the vocal tract till it reaches an obstacle 
So what does it mean? Now from my lungs pressure has created till the vocal cords are tense that means they are closed up they are vibrated and quasi periodic noises uh, quasi periodic signals are created which is my voice sound. Now see suppose the pressure has made the vocal cords to be opened now what happens is they are relaxed they are relaxed they are they are not now vibrating so what happens this is the system how does it look i have my system and this is my vocal cords so the air pressure goes on flowing now what happens is based on my articulation position different sounds are produced so what happens how is my tongue placed how where is my velum placed so all these articulators play an important role now so what is this if the pressure goes on uh, the air flow goes till it comes out from either the nasal cavity or my oral cavity right till it reaches those two points there will be no difference at either of the nasal cavity or my mouth cavity it reaches an obstacle it reaches an obstacle if the obstacle whatever we are facing it is partially affecting the movement of the air then we get the unvoiced segment right so it is not completely stopping the air flow right so we are it is just partially uh, partially affecting so if say suppose my pressure is of in this i have placed a brick or i have stopped it through a cardboard so what happens it it the air flow either it will go back or it will get diffracted so this is called as my partial obstacle so these partial obstacles create a unvoiced segment right if this obstacle is completely affecting it is completely affecting or blocking my air flow what happens is it the air pressure builds up at the obstacle so this obstacle at the obstacle the air pressure goes on increasing so what happens is one or the other time this pressure will get released up they get released up at that time the transient sounds are produced okay we produce the transient sounds like we have in the word called put take kick so what happens is you are trying to when you say put so you have the air pressure being built up at, at your mouth near your teeth so once the air pressure goes on increasing right so the obstacle was a complete one because you have closed your mouth the teeth is completely stopping your pressure once you say put when you you are pressure you are putting your lot of pressure at that point and suddenly you are releasing that sound or the air pressure so it is creating the sound called as put then take so all these sounds are called as the transient sounds that is being created when the obstacle is completely stopping your air flow right so we have seen in the first slide how is the speed signal example right how does the speed signal uh, usually looks like when we plot it in the form of a signal system we have seen this it is like we have three segments voiced unvoiced and silence part so previously we didn't know now if you clearly observe we have quasi periodic signal here the signal is quasi periodic right so such a segment is called as your voiced segment and where you have a small magnitude of the signal and it is like changing right so that is called as my unvoiced segment where there is no magnitude at all then such, such segment is called as my silent segment now what is this here unvoiced segment is they are generated by partial construction right we have seen it so when a partial construction or partial obstacle is created we get the unvoiced when we have the complete uh, obstacle we get the transient sounds when they are in the relaxation oscillation when they are in the a relaxing oscillation then we get the voiced segment okay so now when we are going for we are talking about the speed signals there are another term called as the formman frequencies what are those formman frequencies the resonance frequencies of vocal tract tubes 
happened, right? So the vocal tract, how is it vibrating? What is the vibration frequency of the vocal tract? That is called as the resonance frequency. That is the air pressure that is being created in the vocal tract. It will be vibrating, right? So when that vibration is equivalent to the resonance frequency of the vocal tract, a sound is created. Like we have, you have the tuning. Uh, tuning tube right so that is how the resonances are created these resonances are called as the formant frequencies or simply the formants right and how what are the formant frequencies are they basically depend upon the shape dimensions and how are the articulation positions or articulators being placed so all these define the uh, formant frequencies of the vocal tract Okay. So, in the later videos, we would be talking about the acoustic four digits, uh, what are the, how can a vocal tract be modeled. So, a further information uh, can be obtained from the digital processing of the speech signals by Rabinar, uh, which is a very standard book. Right. So, more of the information can be obtained from this textbook. Right. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.